Holy Wiremont here. Welcome to tutorial 25 in the GLUA Pro series. And we're going to talk about security for your network messages in this one. So this is going to be fun and exciting. So let's start by going over script kitties and hackers. So not all hackers are actually bad people. There are white hats, which actually protect people's systems by going in and finding out what's exploitable and telling the person how to fix their system, which is awesome. And I have a lot of respect for those people. And then there's black hats, which use exploits for their own self gain. And then there's script kitties, which use the code that is written by the black hats in order to just screw everybody's day up. And usually they're very immature and their parents didn't want them or something. Anyway, let's go into how to protect yourself. So first thing we have to do is understand your opponent and what they're going to try to do to your server. So first, they're going to use a memory editor. And they're going to try to find a network string to exploit. So let's put some network strings up here. We'll have these three as such, and they have very interesting names, money, ban, and give admin. That would definitely trigger the interest of someone trying to exploit your server. So let's also then uh, take note that we have add CS Lua file. So not only are the people who are about to exploit your server have client side files downloaded, they also have shared files. And we're gonna get into the significance of a second, but they're gonna look through network strings there too. So keep that in mind. So the next thing, is going to be write some client-side code involving the exploitable string. So let's say this is what it looks like on the server for money. No defenses at all. This is super easy to exploit. We can just put any number in and change any player's saved money on their player data. That's not good. So why is it not good? Let me show you. Because now we can go here on the client and run this through an external program, which will not be detected by Gary's mod or your anti-cheats on your add-ons and whatnot. And now we're able to give everybody all this money, or we can put them in the negatives and really screw their day up, as we have right here. It says include negative values. So that's not good. How do we stop that? So what we can do then, let's get rid of the whole target entity thing, because that's a horrible idea right there. And the second thing is, let's say that if money is less than or equal to zero, then return end. Otherwise, if you have money greater than one million, like as such. And let's just say that's a, just an odd number to have. You shouldn't have any players receiving over 1 million in your current system, which will be unique to you and up to you to decide. Then we're also going to not permit this to change player data. So that's one way you can protect yourself is with a conditional statement. And then the second way, let's take another example here. Let's say that we have a ban command right here. So just a ban command that anybody can access right now and we target the specified entity or the player which will be banned, then we're going to check the length of the ban, which is going to be zero right here. So on the client side, we'll be simply banning the entire server as such with get all right here, player get all, v and all that stuff, and you have v right here, that's the entity being banned, which is every player, for a permanent amount. So how do we protect ourselves against this? Well, one way is that you only allow this to be accessed by admins by using there and say if they are not an admin then just return end and don't execute any of the code below and you can say or um, let's say that the entity you can do a check here so let's put this here and we'll say local target because this would also be good practice say is it actually a player so if it's not a player then we're going to return as well because we don't want to ban some crate from your server. Let's just put target there and that's how you'd make that code a little bit nicer. All right, so the second thing I said um, in terms of what they do to get network strings is they'll go through your shared files with add CS Lua file. Remember, they are downloading those files too, which means if you have any files that look like this, if server, else if client, and let's say you have some sensitive information, some super secret stuff, and this information is a password to access the ability to get God mode for yourself. Well, you have a problem because remember, the hacker is able to read all of this because now they downloaded the file. So they know what the password is, so they can go into your, your VGUI setup or whatever have you and just simply input this, or they can just go in and make their own code and put this network string right there as such, and then put one, two, three, four, five, and guess what? Now they've got God mode. Simple as that. Well, how do we counter that? Simply split this into a server-side file, split this into a client-side only file, 
and that will protect you from worrying about having your sensitive data compromised. All right, so that's another thing you can do. Now, lastly, I'd like to go over a counterattack or a countermeasure. So let's say that you have give admin, and this one is surely going to catch the attention of someone trying to exploit your server. And let's say we want to set up a trap. Well, we are not going to call this net message client side anywhere in the normal code. This is just going to be a bait for anyone who's dumb enough to fall for it, which according to step number one, remember is to use a memory editor to find a network string to exploit. Well, they're going to try to put some values in here. When they do, when they go to the client as such, and then writes this net start give admin and write the entity as oneself, they're going to trigger this. It's going to ban them permanently, and then it'll actually kick them too, saying you've been banned permanently for being a script kitty with love, white hat. All right, so there we go. So we have a bunch of different things. Now, lastly, as a last ditch effort, if you're not sure what string is being exploited, what you can do is just change the name of the string as a way to stall for time until you can find something better. So a stall string, and you just rename it here and on the client as well, wherever you call it in your code. And that's one way to delay hackers from causing mischief on your server. Anyway, I hope this was a very informative tutorial, and I hope that this helps you keep your server safe. If you have any questions, feel free to leave so in the comments section below. As always, if you like the content, feel free to like, subscribe, share, comment, bell, and all that fun stuff. And I'll catch you guys in the next tutorial. Have a great day, and thank you for watching. Don't forget to check out Hexane Networks for affordable and high-performance server hosting. That's Hexane Networks, whose link is in the description below.